one ID, one identity, one person, me. I'm Anthony Gilarici. And today I'd like to talk about um, accurate identities and how accurate identities can, can and will be the next security perimeter moving beyond the network as, the, as a security perimeter for organizations. And how we're gonna accomplish that is through a system called OneID that really focuses on getting identities accurately purvey, or, uh, accurately pushed out to enterprises from the different identity management systems that enterprises may have. Um, it's really important now as things are moving to the cloud, as we're moving into this really remote type of workforce, that network boundary may be, is crumbling down very fast. And identity is really the accurate way that people, accurate identity is really the way that enterprises can secure their resources on something like the internet that's more open than their just enterprise network. <clears throat> So I'm talking about identities, I'm talking actually about belly buttons, not about accounts, right? So a lot of systems, a lot of current systems in the market really focus on accounts and they spin up accounts for however many systems they may need. Um, but that doesn't really say, the accounts doesn't always equal I, one Anthony Gilarducci, right? There's accounts and identities. Identity is really, I'm one identity. And so on the left side here, you can see if an organization has three identity management systems, I, that's three accounts. That's three ways that that I'm in the in their organization, but I'm still only one Anthony. And so what one ID does is it reconciles that information and, and matches me, so that they, the organization can have one identifier for me, and now they can manage one. So from three to one, you can see the savings there. I mean, it's saving um, the, it, that scales a lot more, especially if now you're thinking you have ten thousand people. If they were all in three systems, now you actually can get down from thirty thousand to ten thousand. <clears throat> Um, so, you know, going back, talking about some of that, you know, 30,000, 10,000, look at also licensing, right? In the SaaS model, in the SaaS world, people pay for, per seat. It's no longer you buy some enterprise software and you install it on some servers and you run it. Now it's in the cloud. It, it may be in other places that the, you have to pay per person because they, um, that's how the companies have, have licensed it. And if you have duplicates and you're paying duplicate times for the same person, same identity, that's just wasting money. There's no need for that at all. Um, and with this type of system, really the, the network is your security boundary. You don't have an identity to do that. You have, you're dealing with just these accounts that you spin up anytime someone asks for something. <clears throat> so again, we'll show this as a little bit more granular detail. Um, this one person with multiple relationships, multiple accounts. You can see on the left here, there's some subsidiaries, one, two, and three. In the middle is the organization, the parent company, um, where one ID sits, um, where they would you know, deploy their, their solution. Um, just show one of these examples here. This person A in red, there's three of them. They exist three times um, in each, once in each of the three systems. So before one ID's introduction, they look like three different people. But now including, now include one ID into, this, into the, uh, the conversation. And on the right side, you can see there's one unique user identity, identity I hire for user A, for the red in the top here. Um, and, but we do know too that they're, they're linked to subsidiary one, two, and three. So we know where they came from and we have information about them. Um, real big thing here is there's, you know, from five identities, from nine identities down to five, you're, that's nearly a 50% savings. Um, for be, being able to, to, to issue a unique identifier across the whole organization is powerful as well. You're no longer um, trying to line up with which subsidiary did they log in from. I, now you have one identifier you can look at. So you can control licensing, you can control your security based on that single identifier, that single identity and that identifier for that identity. And you can act on that. You can turn that person off at the global level, um, but you keep the granularity. If they happen to get out of subsidiary two, for instance, um, they can still have their subsidiary one and subsidiary three entitlements information about them. Um, that So they still are part of the parent organization, but they re were removed from one of the, the subsidiaries. And I think I meant, if I didn't mention the down here below, we have this kind of add-on feature that it allows other sor sources that don't necessarily constitute um, enough to be an identity, but there may be like training resources or training um, completions or other entitlements that could be su uh, supplementary to the identity information. Um, again, talking about current access and identity management systems, they really they focus on accounts. They don't focus on identities. Um, so that leaves the organization without that global view, um, which again limits them to network as the as the security perimeter, or if they're managing multiple multiple accounts for the same user in in a, a more decentralized model, that's a lot of overhead that they're managing because they can't, they don't have it uniquely identified to manage one identity for their 
for their for each belly button in their organization. Um, again, that duplicate licensing um, is just throwing away money. That's all it is. <clears throat> um, to talk about the system itself, um, we've been in development since 2013, so it's a, it's a very mature cycle. Uh, we follow agile development processes. We're in the cloud native way, um, really trying to do it service based. We go through a lot of rigor with our QA, static code analysis, penetration testing, um, even though so far as we had a red team test from a different um, national lab, um, things are in an automated fashion. All those pieces and parts put it together so that we became the first and only um, Department of Energy authority to operate its system at the enterprise level. There's not another single one that's done that. Um, and our practices and, and security around that really in, uh, enabled us to do that. <clears throat> so I talked about matching, reconciliation, consolidation. Those things kind of exist in other products, but they really put the onus on the identity management administrators to know a lot of overhead about the, the attributes that are coming in and the, the identity landscape of the, uh, the organization. What our system is striving to do is take that out of the administrator's need to know, so to speak, and have that system do what it needs to do and leaving what we found within Department of Energy five to 10% of them actually need manual intervention. The system can handle the other 90%-ish, 95% automated, right? Just, just on its own without any manual intervention. So right there, immediately reducing the labor costs. Um, the system is also up 24 seven and we get, we didn't just get one bulk feed. We don't get one bulk feed. We get continual feeds from these elements. Um, in Department of Energy's case, 80 of them. So we have 80 different places that are sending us data at intervals between one hour and one day, um, depending on what the, the element requires there. And those integrations are done from different identity management systems, whether it be from Microsoft or from, um, from Oracle. And so we really look towards how the industry standards um, for data communication and protocols, as opposed to any type of proprietary solutions. Um, and then we've been in production, um, in deployed to production for three years in Department of Energy, um, serving them, and they, you know, successfully, continually the system operating live as we speak. Um, so kind of the, the the three pillars of the system are the reconciliation engine. That's you know a lot of that intellectual property is around that fuzzy matching logic. Um, really, over the decades of experience in identity management within the team, we're able to develop this um, these algorithms that can take a lot of that onus off the identity management administrators and put it into the system. Um, on the left of there is the administrative tooling for that those cases, those you know, five to 10% cases that um, manual intervention is required. Um, and just for a purview of the system, um, you know, if you need to reassign things, just all the all the manual things that may need to be done, you know, is uh, managing people and managing identities is um, an ever evolving um, system. And then on the right is the enterprise dashboards. This gives, you know, like the DOE leadership, um, the CIO, the ability to see all of the, the people on the network, all of the people um, that is that are being provisioned and known by DOE elements and how they're authenticating and, and what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that one we'll, we'll talk to it in again in a minute, but that comes up really key in um, some of the license reduction. So I'll definitely bring that up. <clears throat> so now we've been kind of talking about Department of Energy. The use case actually literally had this use case. Um, on the left here, I was Anthony three times at three different national labs um, until 2016 when we went into production. Then they all the labs decided or were feeding to 180. And on the right side, now I'm Anthony, one belly button, one identity with one unique identifier, but I have three three relationships, three accounts, so to speak. Um, and so that's, you know, think of that on scale. We can go here now to see these numbers. There was that happened for there was 500,000 over 500,000 different accounts, so to speak, in within the Department of Energy's elements. One ID was able to reconcile that and consolidate that down to 285,000. So we're, we we really changed the posture and eliminated a lot of risk to enhance the security to Department of Energy so that they could act on those single identities that are mandated by the federal government to be identities, not just accounts. Um, really providing them with that identity shield and enabling them to start to look more at the um, SaaS type of solutions for their for the workforce and for the agency because they they can now take those identities accurately and not have to worry so much about the network boundary you know for the for the use cases that that makes sense for um, 
we were able to reduce a lot of the costs that were going on because of people were manually managing the fact that people moved around um, the DOE complex, passing around PII and, and that kind of stuff and the seat licensing. So like I mentioned, we actually, they, the DOE CIO was able to use the enterprise dashboards in order to win their negotiations with the vendor for a COTS product and save the department money um, just based on having that information, which they never had before. Um, and then for the users like myself, I have less passwords I, can, I need to manage. Now I have one password that I can use for multiple systems around the complex. And I don't have to worry about changing it every six months times three or times four or times five. I just have one password I may need to change. So in talking with about DOE is that, you know, our first use case, our target market is government agencies, government organizations, um, multinational corporations that have um, postures in maybe multiple countries or around a large geographical area, the identity management systems may need to stay at, um, you know, within a certain nation or something like that. So consolidated, but the corporations still need a, a global view of their, their identities that, that are acting in their systems. Um, and then parent and, and corporations with subsidiaries, um, merging and acquiring corporations. Um, I will say that we had um, one case that it was a, a large airline, um, I'm not to say the name, but they had this exact use case, this exact problem. They didn't have, they had 30, I think, identity management systems and like 50 or 60 apps, applications, and users were trying to get 50 different passwords to get in and nothing. It was just a, a big spider web of a mess. And so we see that that's, that exists. They don't, they don't have a solution right now. They, they, we see that that exists in these large organizations like that, that have maybe over time gotten larger and larger and they just never reconciled their identity management. Um, like one ID can do for them because maybe it was too hard, right? With these current COTS products, what so one ID is could solve that would would solve that for them. <clears throat> Again, those sophisticated algorithms, right? That was over decades of, of identity management experience. We designed and developed those few hundred thousand lines of code. Um, that's really the 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 hot stuff in there. Um, and now we know able to accurately identify people. Again, that's the federal mandate. Um, we're not passing around uh, person identified information to do that, where we actually have a DUE unique identifier. One ID can, can create that identifier for an organization. Users have less passwords to manage, gave, gave, gives enterprises a central way to manage, and really can't harp on this enough. It gives that identity shield so that organizations can move beyond the network perimeter for their security, knowing that the identities are secure and accurate. <clears throat> so with DUE being our first customer, um, we have in 2020, we've been looking at, there's two other agencies that have expressed they have this need as well. In 2021, we, we would look for other government agencies since that's kind of where we know our space. And in 2022 and the moving out, we'd really be looking, you know, we'd really be looking for partners that have industry experience to, to market and to break into that private sector, those multinational corporations and those um, parent subsidiary, those types of, of things outside of the government. So I'd like to hear this is our copyright um, with the IPO office. Again, it's copyrighted software from Lawrence Silver National Lab. And I'm Anthony Coducci, and thank you very much for your time. <laughs>